Let's talk about silly. I'd like to share with you today an idea which, when you take it away, will enable you to avoid one of the biggest mistakes, in my opinion, that people make when they are persuading others. Not so much when they're persuading others in a face-to-face -face environment in the sense of a one-to-one -one meeting or even standing on stage and speaking to an audience, but particularly when they're speaking through a video camera or when they're writing to people, and that's where it comes out mostly when they're writing or sometimes on an audio. I'll show you exactly how to avoid it and I'll give you some examples so you'll start spotting it everywhere when people do this mistake. Hello there, my name is Peter Thompson. I'm the UK's most prolific information product creator. And over the last 27 plus years since I sold my business and semi-retired, I've been sharing my knowledge, my experience and my expertise in business and helping particularly coaches, consultants, speakers and trainers and small business owners to be more successful and build for themselves a business and a life of choice. Now, one thing I often say when I'm running my webinars, which I'm doing lots of at the moment, I have to say, is I don't have all the answers. Uh, yeah, I've been in business for a fair old time, had some great successes, some fantastic failures, learned more from the failures than the successes, but I know I don't have all the answers because I keep on learning. In fact, my expression is, the day you stop learning is the day you stop earning. So what is this mistake? Let me tell you what it is. It's as simple as this. It's misunderstanding, perhaps not even recognizing that when we're communicating with people, we've got to be aware of where they are in this sense. If I'm reading an email that somebody sent me, I'm likely to read it on my own, just occasionally. And in fact, I can think of an occasion today when a friend emailed me and I read it out to my wife so we could share the experience together and laugh about the ideas he was saying. It was a funny email. But normally, I would say 99.9% .9 of the emails I receive, I read them on my own. When I watch webinars, I tend to watch them on my own. When I watch training videos, I watch them on my own. When I read marketing copy that comes through my letterbox, direct mail, postcards, I read them on my own. If that's true for most people, and I believe it is, and you'll know if it's true for you, then why on earth do people write to me as though I'm a member of an audience? So they make mistakes like this. They write to me and they say, because some of you, some of me, which which bit of me we're talking about? So not all of me, just some of me. You know, I mean, crazy, isn't it? Some of you, oh, what, you writing my leg? You can't say some of you. And then they say, because many of you, well, I've suddenly duplicated, I've cloned myself and there's somebody else here. That's crazy, isn't it? Talk about the simplest way to break rapport is start talking to people as though they're not the person you're talking to. Now, I know why this happens is because people go on a Zoom call, a Skype call, a conference call of some description, and they can see all the people. If it's not a webinar, if it's a web meet, they can see the people. So they know they're talking to an audience and they use audience-centric language. They stand on a stage and speak to a group or they stand in a meeting of their colleagues and speak to a group. And yes, it's obvious that there's other people in the room and you can use this plural language. But you can't say many of you and some of you or even in your minds, in your mind's eye, yes, I know I've got more than one mind, but you know, it doesn't make sense. So we need to be incredibly careful with this idea of writing to one person. And the way that I do it is, I think very clearly through my avatar diagram, I have an avatar diagram, which is a mind map, of the people I normally speak to, but I pick one person and I write to that one person. Now, the way that you can do this is to get yourself a wooden figure and have that person as the person that you write to. Or get a picture of a typical client or customer or patient that you deal with and have that person in mind. Maybe put their picture on your, your desk or your table when you're writing to them. In that way, you'll be certain who you are, you'll be certain who they are, and you'll communicate just in the way that you'll communicate if you're talking to somebody live. I can't remember the time, and I bet you can't remember the time either, when you turn round to somebody, having started a conversation with them face to face, and said, oh, excuse me a second, let me start that sentence again. I don't think that's ever happened. So we don't need to do that when we're talking to a camera lens. We just keep on talking. When we're talking and writing, by we're talking through our fingers, we keep on writing, but we have clarity about who we're talking to, and we have total and utter clarity that we're talking to one person. Just go through any website and you look at the plural language. People confuse the word we 
they use we meaning me and my colleagues that we and then they use we meaning the people they're talking to the people not the person that they're talking to this is called a lack of audience continuity so this comes into the same idea of having once decided who we're speaking to is to speak to that one person and communicate with them as they are a person talk to them as an individual then it makes sense don't say we do this for our clients unless you follow it up with and this is what we can do for you do it in that way this is a cracking idea, it really is. It makes such a difference to the way somebody receives the message. If we get their minds to stutter, if we add what's called in copywriting parlance friction to our writing, then we block the idea of our message getting through clearly. And as you and I know, resistance is created through a lack of clarity. So if this has been useful for you, let me know. Put any comments down here in the box over here and no doubt we can start a dialogue. But in the meantime, I wish you every success in all your adventures in life as you have freedom from anything that may have held you back and freedom to be, do and have whatever you set your heart and mind upon. I'll share more of this over the next few of these. I've got quite a few of them already written down to share with you. See you on the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. Then click to watch the next video. Remember to visit our website at peterthompson.com and download your free copy of my latest book, How to Write Your Business Book in Five Days or Less. Until next time, every success.